Okay, YouTube, so here's the problem I've got. I've got this Sony receiver with an S-Air wireless transmitter receiver built into the back of it. And I've got two wireless speakers. One over there, about 20 feet away. Line of sight through that half wall. And then one over there in that corner. Sound to the latter one isn't so bad. Uh, fairly uninterrupted unless you're right up on top of that speaker. But uh, the one over there, uh, the first one on the other side of the half wall, really has a tendency to cut out if you go anywhere near it. Like if we're over there throwing darts or if you put your hand near the speaker, it craps out. So what I'm hoping is that I can take this transmitter and it has these two uh, built onto the PCB F antennas uh, which just aren't doing a good job. So I'm hoping that these little pads that are up here at the top, I can solder on a uh, an IPX connector and snap on some external antennas. So that's what we're going to try to do. And you see there's plenty of room inside this housing for us to install the bulkhead connector. Either have it come out the back or maybe out the side in this little corner here. Uh, not this side because it's got the, uh, the mounting post for the daughter board. Uh, goes on through there, through one screw. But I intend to use these little IPX to UFL connectors, uh, which are a couple of bucks on Amazon. And then, uh, and then I had some old uh, UFL antennas left over from an old 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless end router. And then these are... <clears throat> little pieces which I'm hoping to solder onto the board. I'm guessing that's why the traces are there. I could just scrape off. You've, you can find online where folks have just scraped off um, the solder trace and then tapped directly onto that with an antenna. But rather than um, using that destructive method, I'm hoping to go off of these unused pads since they seem to be configured just the same way the um, surface mount IPX connectors are. So I'm going to try that first and hope um, that that gives me a good range increase. Okay, not what I would call my finest work, but should get the job done. Uh, the melting temperature of the solder that was still on the board was pretty high, so uh, I didn't have any luck with my <clears throat> with my air, you know, my air soldering station. Even turned all the way up and pointed right at it, so I just went uh, went right with the old school, which made it a little clunky, but I believe I caught the traces properly. And uh, I guess we'll snap some antennas on to see how it goes. I'll do that before I bother drilling any holes in the casing because if it doesn't work at all, then I gotta go to plan B. So all in all, I'm satisfied with the uh, range increase that seemed to do the trick. Here are the uh, uh, antenna leads snapped right onto the connectors that I soldered onto the board. This shorter one here, I'll probably wind up uh, kind of curling this lead around inside the housing and installing the bulkhead connector over here in the corner. Uh, this longer one, because of uh, the way that I had the receiver buried up against the wall underneath the television with the center channel speaker sitting right, uh, <clears throat> right above it, I want to uh, go ahead and elevate this antenna up away from the receiver unit. So I'm going to leave this lead on here, drill a little hole out the uh, out the side of the S Air transmitter, and then I'll I'll mount this bulkhead somewhere else, maybe up on top of the speaker and just below the television, uh, somewhere where it's got a little better line of sight. Um, but all in all, with just uh, leaving the case open and leaving the antennas kind of out there laying around loose. I think I had one or two interruptions of the far speaker on the other side of the half wall uh, and and the one uh, that was over by the pool table d didn't uh, didn't skip a beat so very satisfied it seems like that's exactly why the uh, the board manufacturer put those traces there so that you know whoever was ordering it from them be it Sony or whoever would have the option of putting those uh, <clears throat> you know, those connections on there. Sony didn't take that option, so uh, I'm glad that 
that we were able to for just a couple of dollars. Uh, maybe it was 15 minutes worth of work, and I'm very satisfied with the range increase. So hopefully this helps you, and maybe you'll be able to do the same thing. Okay, last look before we button it up. Ended up making my hole in this direction because it cleared um, a little standoff that's inside here. You see this little plastic piece sticking up holding the daughter board. Um, if I tried to come in from the side in this direction, then the, uh, the inside of the UFL connector would have been poking into that. That would not have worked. So pointed this direction, I had just enough room. Um, drilled it essentially even with that seam, a little bit lower than that. Uh, tucked the lead up underneath the daughter board and wrapped around and then made my connection there. Um, for my longer lead, I basically snapped the case half together and when I did, I drilled, oh and, and this hole is a, that's a quarter inch hole, so work your way up, start small, work your way up to a quarter inch drill bit or just use a step drill bit if you have one. Um, <clears throat> for this, I snapped the case together and I started with 1 16th and then this wound up being a 3 30 seconds hole. And uh, just kind of took the lead and put a little bit of a kink in it. I uh, didn't even need a tool, just basically just used my thumbnail and pressed it um, so that it would bend down this way and you'll see it'll lie down into that hole and not come unsnapped here. You have to stay clear of the back of the daughter board because on the underside here, this piece has to fit down in there and, uh, and clip along the back side. So no touchy in this area. You gotta leave it clear to make that interface. Uh, and then that'll be it. Here's our finished product. You get the one antenna coming out the back. It's fixed and a nice long lead this one which is mounted on a little L bracket that I can go ahead and screw to the wall or the back of the speaker wherever I like. Hope you have as good luck with your project as I have with mine and thanks for watching.